Back in St. Louis, heading home today. I came from Indianapolis, and so it's the, the reverse of what I did yesterday. So, you know, I've been doing it all week. Open this thing up here in a minute. Okay, that's not correct. I'm sure it's gonna have me log in again, yeah. All right, looks like they got me, supposedly got me hooked. They got a dolly number right here at the bottom right. The lead trailer is 285690. That is located right over there in the uh, outbound line. Let's see where that other trailer's at. <laughs> Make sure it should be right behind it. Yep, it looks like it is going to be hooked. So, going home is a gravy train, but coming up here is something else. Yeah, on the way home, for some reason, everything's already hooked and uh, you ain't gonna really do much. But on the way up, man, you gotta work your tail off, it seems like, when you get to St. Louis. It's really not that big a deal. But... The last video that I made you guys watched, um, the two for one special, that happens from time to time, but that's probably just like the most work you're ever going to do at one terminal unless you have to get out and move a couple of trailers around just to get to the trailer you're looking for which i've only ever had to deal with that on a weekend i've never had to deal with that uh you know throughout the week and that's like if you go to a small terminal and they're closed and they don't have yard hostlers and drivers just go in there and just drop the set anywhere and then you got to break some and you got to move some stuff out of the way and doesn't happen all the time but it does happen but it's not hard it's doable as you guys saw already and i did run into some rain tonight so that was also pretty fun not it didn't rain that much really it just it just it did rain all right now i'm gonna try uh i'm gonna put this computer back on yard move it's already on yard move right now but i'm gonna go ahead and uh, go back to on duty yard move i'm gonna put swap in there now hopefully it doesn't uh revert back to the drive line because i'm not trying to waste all my time up here especially since i don't have to do a lot of work today <laughs> all i've really got to do is go and get under this other set over here and just you know leave but i have to you know do a 30 minute break because on the ride down from here there's only a few places where you might be able to go into and actually take a 30 minute break but i'm just going to go ahead and try to get my break knocked out right here on the yard that way i don't have to stop unless i gotta use the restroom or something like that I gotta get my uh, gotta get my phone back out so I can see the trailer numbers. Wow, these yard jockeys are they're all coming around here to break sets. Which is a good thing. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Alright, it's supposed to be down there on the end. I'm just gonna double check that trailer number again because I have a bad time for remembering numbers. Oh, trailer numbers specifically because we you know you go through so many of them 690 it's supposed to be down here on the end we'll see 285 690 that's what i'm looking for 285 690 that's what i'm looking for yeah it's gonna be the lead trailer oh i thought that was gonna be it <laughs> all right make sure it's not over here Should be right here somewhere. Here it is, 285-690. Okay, we're good. We're just gonna back it up a little bit there. Oh. Pulled up a little too far. That's all right. Nobody's really here either. Of course, it is like, you know, one in the morning, so probably the perfect time to come in here. Four and five in the morning, that's not a good time to come in here, I can tell you that. That's what I did the last couple of times coming up. I'll have to get my phone here in a second and I'll check. Make sure I got... Make sure the set is hooked like it's supposed to be. 
which it I mean I'm sure it is but I got to make sure that rear trailer is the same as what I'm planned on this landing gear is kind of stiff I was looking to see if this was a GI trailer <laughs> those things are stiff this one's kind of stiff it's an SS trailer I think it's just the fact it's an old it's an older trailer it's a little stiff that's why you see me using two hands like this instead of like I normally do Ah, it's all right. We'll get it. Oh, my goodness. Come on. Get out of there. What in the world? Okay. Nope. I thought I had it. So make sure you get you a good hammer. I think this is a four-pound yep, four hammer. I've already used it a little bit, as you can tell. Now, Chris, what are you going to do with that hammer? Well, I'm going to try to get this thing bent up a little bit. So it can... So that bolt will go all the way to the end. If I can bend it. There you go. Just gotta, I just bent that up a little bit more and it came right out. That's good to go. Uh, all right. See if this landing gear's rolled up. See if that trailer's connected. Landing gear ain't up quite high enough for me. That's a good easy one right there. You know that's a big E trailer. Easy, big easy. All right, that's in there, okay. Well, everything seems to be kosher for now. I'm gonna run some air. I'll fix that, I'll fix it now. I can't see that, not fix it. Okay, now it's all uh, connected. Looks good. Let me just let me just confirm those numbers are good because I told you guys once before it's, it still applies about the uh, wrong trailers. If you pull the wrong trailers, they'll get you. Be careful. I can't remember, but I think you have three chances in a 12-month period to pull the wrong trailer if you. If you do it three times within a 12 month period, you're terminated. They don't put up with that. 297572, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. 933891, it's on here. Combined weight in both trailers is approximately 27,000. I'm gonna get that up out of the way. I don't like how. I see why though, because this right here is completely caved in. But at least wrap it, wrap it around there or something. That way you have less chance of hitting the ground or breaking a hose or whatever. Now look at this here. This is underneath the chain. That ain't how that's supposed to be. Oh. This is why you inspect these pre-hooked sets, man. That right there could have ripped the hose off right there. I'd have been stranded on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere down Highway 67. See what I'm saying? Watch out for yourself out here. Let me go. Is that a dummy glad hand? No. No, no, no. Never mind. Uh, I'm gonna run some air through there. Alright, this all looks pretty good. I got man, I got mud flaps. Man, I, I got it going on. This trailer right here is the fourth trailer I've pulled tonight. This is the third. I inspect it to make sure it's roadworthy. And of course, if an air canister, a brake chamber is going bad, it'll be leaking air. That's why I'm always listening to the air because I've had that problem before. You guys on my channel have been here for a while. You've seen that. I had a brake chamber 
on a trailer that was going bad it kept i kept hearing leaking air and it wasn't leaking right here it wasn't leaking up in here anywhere none of the connections there were good um it was underneath the trailer the brake chamber itself had a or maybe it was an airline connected to the brake chamber it was right in that area though so that's 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 how you know brake chambers leaking uh, but everything's good so Meat points are pretty easy. I mean, they're basically like um, you're, you're just picking up a pre-hooked set. So everything I told you the other day about going through St. Louis, getting pre-hooked sets, same thing. You just have to inspect everything. Everything back here seems kosher. Let me just take a look with my light here. Oh, I had to scrape one of those off. Oh, this looks good back here. Wow, oh, okay sure the dolly's got air that's all it does okay everything seems to be working out pretty nice she said this back trailer will lose light the lights flicker that's what she was saying but i'm moving the cord here and nothing's happening so i don't know I'm wondering if it's the pigtail on her trailer, on her lead box or what, I don't know. Okay, well everything seems to be pretty kosher. Mud flaps, everything's good. Nice pre-hooked set. And that's the set that I brought in right there. Pretty much golden. Meat point, I-55. Nice truck stop, by the way. Those QTs are pretty good stops. I like going in there. Oh, she said that rear trailer had a electrical issue, but I didn't see it do anything when I wiggled that cable. Let me make sure this one's good. No. Seems to be pretty kosher to me. Get the paperwork here. I'm on my way home now. This is the best part about the run is on Fridays, you can just <laughs> come up here, do a meet, turn around, go back home. Super easy. It's about a five hour trip each way, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, depending on how fast you drive, I guess. You run through a few small towns, but nothing major. This is a pretty nice truck stop too. A really good meet point. No complaints from me. Now the only thing that sucks about a meet and turn run, if you get one, is, um, you know, the person you're meeting, well, are they gonna be on time every day? Are you gonna be on time every day? How bad is it gonna be? Because it could be really bad. If they break down, then they're gonna be late. If you break down, you know, you're gonna be late, that kind of thing. I wasn't sure if he was gonna stop or not. That's why I sat there until he got to the stop sign. <laughs> oh well. But a meat guy could really hold you up if they're not a good one. So that's why I say what I say. I mean, the meat, the meat turns are pretty cool. As long as you got somebody that's gonna show up 
be there pretty quick. Uh, let's see, I think I only had to wait about three minutes. It wasn't very long at all. I didn't really time it, I'm just assuming it was maybe it was three minutes from the time I pulled in to the time the meat driver pulled in. So it worked out pretty well tonight. Actually, I thought she was gonna be here before I was here, but that was not the case. And you see, it's pretty empty. Nobody's really there getting fuel or anything. I don't think QT truck stops, in the middle of the night anyway, uh, show up on the Swift radar or the Prime radar or the Warner, you know, the Mega Carrier radar. That's why there's probably not a lot of them over there. Otherwise, they'd be all over the place. <laughs> Y'all know how it is out there. But man, this is nice. I get to go back home. I'm gonna take my two days off. This is my normal day to work anyway. You know, I'm a Monday through Friday extra board driver. And uh, this run just happened to be a real good run this week. I've been enjoying it for the most part. It's home every other day. You know, you go all the way up to Indy, you lay down, you get up the next day, go back home. It's not bad if you a run like this is really good for someone who wants to be home more but at the same time you're guaranteed a certain number of miles and if you live a little further away from the terminal like me it takes me an hour to get there but I'm getting back early I mean um, when I got back home yesterday I think I was off work for like 14 hours 13 or 14 hours is how long I was off work. So, man, that was really nice. That's not something that, you know, typically happens.